are rolling on December 5th, 2017, where we are continuing to see our persuasive speeches. And today we are hearing the A's and 1D. And our first guest who's going to persuade us is Justin Bolt, who stands before you, managing attention, communicating respect, making sure all eyeballs are on him, all phones are away, computers are closed, saying to himself, I respect my audience, I'm really meaning it, finding friendly eyes in the front and center, saying if you love side street. In the fourth grade, my family had just moved to a new town, and we didn't even know where the hospital was, but I had sharp stomach pains that made my mom wonder if I was bleeding internally or uh, if I had a severe disease. So they took me four separate times uh, over the course of a week to the emergency room, and at the end of uh, my four trips to the emergency room, I'd undergone uh, CAT scans, I'd undergone x-rays, ultrasounds, and uh, all sorts of poking and prodding, and I was sent home with a diagnosis of constipation. <laughs> uh, today, uh, that, that emergency room debacle cost $10,000, thank God for medical insurance, uh, but uh, I think it was preventable. Mm -hmm. Today I'm going to try to persuade you to eat more vegetables, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm going to give you two reasons why you should eat more vegetables, and I'm going to give you uh, a couple benefits why you should eat some veg eat more vegetables. Uh, this is significant because uh, many of the medical conditions that we face in this country today are curable, but they are very expensive. They add to our country's national debt and they add to our personal debt. Uh, they add to your personal debt too if you don't have medical insurance, uh, and uh, a lot of these are preventable. So this is significant for you because it can offer you significant health benefits. The first reason why I think that you should eat uh, more vegetables is that scientific evidence is clear that eating vegetables both helps prevent disease and a lack of vegetables uh, causes disease. According to Dr. Farad Islami of the American Cancer Society, uh, uh, patients who did not have uh, uh, patients who had uh, oral cancer or pharyngeal cancer or uh, laryngeal cancer uh, had uh, about 10% or 20% of them, uh, their cases were attributable directly to a lack of vegetables in their diet. Uh, in addition, uh, we see that colorectal cancer uh, uh, can be 10% attributable uh, directly to a lack of vegetables. So that's the negative. What about the positive? We see uh, from a study done by doctors at the University of Tokyo that uh, patients who eat vegetables are 10% less likely to, de uh, to develop hypertension or high blood pressure. Uh, uh, how, so I've, I've shown you how eating vegetables uh, can help decrease your risk of disease and how, eating veg how not eating vegetables can contribute to a decline in your health. Um, how does this make me feel? This makes me feel secure because I know that I'm doing something in my life to help with, um, to help with my health. The next reason that I think that you should eat more vegetables, the next reason that I think that you should eat more vegetables uh, is that eating vegetables is actually not that difficult. It's pretty easy and it's pretty cheap. Think about it. Yeah, you can buy a uh, bag of frozen vegetables at Target or Walmart for about $2, and that serves you for about five meals. That doesn't add much cost to your uh, diet, but uh, if you had medical problems, that would add an extra $85,000, $100,000 over the course of your lifespan. What, what's cheaper, $85,000 to do uh, a bunch of tests and surgeries, or uh, buying a $2 bag of vegetables every so often? Um, how does this make me feel? This makes me feel. Uh, uh, this makes me feel. Yeah. 
it makes me feel uh, it makes me feel uh, uh, optimistic. Optimistic that I can uh, 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 maintain a healthy lifestyle because I originally thought that healthy uh, a healthy lifestyle would be an extremely expensive lifestyle that digs me into a lot of debt. So I've provided you with a couple of benefit, uh, a couple of reasons why uh, you should eat more vegetables, uh, and I'm going to provide you with some uh, benefits that you will get from eating vegetables. The first benefit that you'll get is that you'll maintain your health. Uh, that's a no-brainer. The second benefit. Um, that you'll get uh, is that you will, um, uh, that it's not uh, difficult to do that. And um, I'm going to provide with you three concrete examples of uh, uh, what you can do to eat more vegetables. Yeah. Uh, one, you can take my uh, strategy of going to the grocery store to uh, buy frozen, uh, frozen bag of vegetables and um, eat that for every meal. You can carry around a bag of celery sticks or carrots to eat as a snack. And you can buy a cookbook. If you buy a cookbook, you're going to spend a lot of money on the cookbook, and you're going to be more inclined to use it uh, for healthy foods that include vegetables. In summary, I've provided you with two reasons why you should eat healthier, uh, with more vegetables, and I've provided you with uh, 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 benefits that you will get, and I've provided you with concrete examples that you can take. Uh, in conclusion, there should be no doubt in this room that you should eat more vegetables. Um, that emergency room visit that costed $10,000 to the insurance company could have been completely preventable. Uh, I think that uh, if you take my advice, uh, you can avoid a debacle like I did. Thank you. What was the time? 5.35. 5.35. Are we on this side, Sydney? Okay, well, why not? Uh, Sydney. Hi, I, I Sydney. Like your, I like your outfit. I thought mm -hmm. it, it caught me really off guard. It's kind of like that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, I, I, mm -hmm. Like, you, you were talking about sometimes you get, like, did stumble a bit, but it seemed like you did get better. Yeah. Hi, my name's Patricia. Hi, Patricia. Uh, you spoke well. But had you prepared more, you would have had that big gap of silence. Go over. Right. Mm -hmm. Justin, yeah, really uh, like your speech and uh, like the impulse of it. And um, it could have been a really boring speech because people don't eat vegetables because they're boring and they don't mm -hmm. taste very well. And uh, you, you, uh, in some ways, I think you needed to address that because you know, like, who wants to walk around? I walk around chewing on celery a lot. I happen to like the taste, but most people don't. Uh, <clears throat> so let's go through this and uh, see how you might improve. You started with a story, a good story, and it had a funny ending constipation. We love that. You got a titter out of your audience and that was good. Your thesis preview, fine. Your SIG statement, perfect. Really well developed and well argued in terms of the needs of the audience. You made it significant to them. So thank you for that. I've been railing on this all quarter. Most people aren't quite getting that or developing that, and you did. So thank you for that, Justin. On your first reason. Hmm. Let me say something in overview. Mm -hmm. You're making arguments from authority. You cited doctors, you cited where they practiced, but you didn't cite the dates. So we didn't know how recent your evidence was. And don't tell me it's on the footnote in your Chicago style, which was perfect, because you need to orally 
argue and remind your audience that you have very recent evidence. Okay? On specifically on your evidence, it was compelling. Now, it would be interesting to know how they got to these conclusions about throat cancer. I see how they got to the conclusions with colon cancer. That makes perfect sense when you don't have enough roughage of vegetables and you know meat sits in and ferments for 90 days. You know, it's not good. I very much liked your feelings that you put in the end and trying to make an emotional connection, to use the terminology of our text, it made the speech a little more sticky. Mm. Except, of course, when you mm, paused. Mm -hmm. um, your second reason was sort of a uh, scare tactic, and you suggested that we eat a pound of carrots and so forth, and we won't get diabetes. He's got the diabetes, yeah. And it's cheaper to eat carrots than to pay large medical bills later on, right? Yeah. On your concrete examples, you didn't know your speech, so you got ahead of yourself. And you listed your benefits first, then went back to the concrete example. So it was a little bit disjointed, right? Right. Your uh, summary, conclusion, and tieback were excellent, Justin. On your canise, hand movement, move out more rather than keeping the hands close by. Walk more smoothly and pause less often in my speech. How did it go, sir? Uh, well, the pause was not good. Uh -huh. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. I, I, I've been watching Stephen Colbert, and I, I notice how he moves his hands, so I've been trying to imitate that. Okay, he's your role model, huh? Uh -huh. Um, okay, good, yeah. Then, did you see him last night with Billy Bush? I didn't watch the whole thing, no. Mm, okay. It was Trump on those tapes. Okay. Yeah, okay. And so, what about the other ones? Uh, so the hands, and then the, the pauses, and then the... Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think uh, my last movement back to the center was kind of... Uh, I, I, uh, I, I messed up because I started moving, and then I realized I had something else to say first. Okay. Well, I think you've improved over the quarter. I would say work on more of an emphatic style of delivery if you can. I think that would really help you fill the room more with your energy so that you're more exciting to speak about and a little more audience analysis on why people do not eat vegetables. Uh, scaring them eat vegetables, maybe. Uh, telling them there's studies that you know you're going to get cancer if you don't. I don't know. There's a, you, you have the recipes and you know they're actually good and you can make them taste good. I don't know, but something that would make it more palatable because you know it's, it's the old story of you know Popeye and the spinach and no one wants to eat their spinach, right? Okay, thank you, Justin. Okay, mm -hmm. Whoa. Okay, and uh, because I like the name Iris, we'll hear the D. Oh, you're going next? Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's all there. So this is your research. Excellent. Huh? Good. Good. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, Iris, uh, oh boy, you're uh, it's kind of washing out on this white background, but I guess we'll have to live with it. Iris stands before us, managing attention, communicating respect. Can you take a half step back? Uh, yeah, thanks. Communicating respect. Making sure no one's texting, eating, all eyeballs are on you, Iris. Say to yourself, I respect my audience. I draw the eyes near the front and center. Say name to the left. Start your speech, Iris. Hi, Iris. Hi, Iris. Peer, peer reviewed medical journal called Clinical Toxicology, DJ Jackson reports data from the Simmons Teen Survey, which is an adolescent purchasing analysis. It shows that 31% of adolescents from 17 year, I mean 12 years old to 17 years old, and 34% of 18 to 24 year olds report consuming energy drinks on a regular basis. This means that a third of adolescents are consuming energy drinks regularly each week. Today I want to personally lead you to stop drinking these energy drinks. I am going to offer you two reasons why I think this is important, three actions you can take, and some benefits that you will receive when you follow my proposal. A lot of teenagers and young adults like you and me, we depend on these energy drinks to stay up all night, we cram for exams, we do our homework, and a lot of people are just attracted to the idea of a drink that can increase your alertness, it can give you energy, stamina, and athletic performance. However, I think the problem arises when people are unaware of the negative and dangerous health effects that can take place due to these drinks. And today I just want to inform you these negative health effects so that you may make better choices for your health and your lifestyle as a college student. Good. So, the first reason that I would like to persuade you to abstain from using energy drinks is because these drinks have a very high amount of caffeine in them. Jackson informs us that it is generally recommended for adults to consume about 200 to 300 milligrams of caffeine per day, and for adolescents, it's even lower. It's a limit of 100 milligrams of caffeine per day. However, energy drinks have about 80 to 500 milligrams of caffeine in them. For example, Redline, an energy drink, has 316 milligrams of caffeine in an 8-ounce bottle. So you can see that one energy drink, that's already exceeding that um, limit of caffeine intake that you should take in a day. So if you drink a lot of caffeine, it can lead to caffeine intoxication, which is when your central nervous system becomes overstimulated. And it, you can have negative symptoms such as upset stomach, anxiety, insomnia, um, sugars, and you can see how you can see that mm -hmm. there are actually physical consequences that can happen because of these energy drinks. And I personally used to drink a lot of energy drinks um, in high school and also like beginning of college. And I never had a problem with it until like one night. Actually, I stayed up all night with like two monsters and I started feeling very nauseous and very like gross inside. And I managed to get everything done, but then by morning time, I was going to take a 30 minute nap before I started getting ready for school, but I couldn't fall asleep. I, I just felt so gross, it was almost like a hangover. So I ended up going to the bathroom, and I remember just throwing up, and that was the night that um, I was, I became more conscious about energy drinks, and you know, I could tell that these were very bad for my body. Good. So the second reason that I want to um, give you to abstain from drinking energy drinks is that it can lead to death. Um, in a 2014 peer-reviewed medical journal called um, Military Medicine, David Foster, Lucas Johnson, and Jackie McDowell, they inform us that deaths as a result of cardiac arrhythmias associated with energy drink consumptions have been recorded. 
Um, cardiac arrhythmias is another term for irregular heartbeat, and this is very dangerous because it can lead to seizures and it can lead to death. And I think, I feel very strongly about this issue because I feel like no, no one in this room um, are, should think that our healths and our lives, um, like what could be more important, you know, than our lives and our healths? Like whatever reason we might have to consume these energy drinks, you know, once your life is over, you know, it's not going to matter in the end, you know. So mm -hmm. I think it's not worth it. I think you should resort to healthier alternatives. Mm -hmm. And that is why I'm going to show you now three um, healthier alternatives mm -hmm. to drinking energy drinks. So number one, resort to healthier drinks or mm -hmm. foods such as tea, chocolate, um, protein shakes, or like green smoothies. These all provide very good energy. Number two, Take a walk outside. Like when you're feeling tired, when you're studying, and when you feel like you can't stay up, don't just grab a energy drink from the what's it called refrigerator. <laughs> but go take a walk outside, get some fresh air, and walk around. Like moving around mm -hmm. will help you increase that energy, and it will help you be more motivated to work. Mm -hmm. And finally, number three, take a power nap because a 10 to 20 minute nap can really increase your alertness, and it will really help you just get back on track. Good. So, in summary, or JQ, um, the benefits you'll receive when you perform these actions is you will feel more awake, you will be productive, and you will be healthy. Mm -hmm. I personally stopped drinking energy drinks. It's been about like a year and a half now. My mom always used to nag at me about that, and I didn't listen at first. But I started listening to it, and I, there is a difference between drinking energy drinks and taking the three alternatives I gave you. You feel way better. You don't crash mm -hmm. after working for hours, and mm -hmm. you just... Feel more clean and more ready for your day. Good. So, in summary, I have shown you two reasons why you should abstain from drinking energy drinks, three actions you can take, and benefits that you will receive if you follow my proposal. There should be no doubt in this room that you should stop drinking energy drinks. And my hope is that the percentage of adolescents who consume energy drinks um, will decrease and that people will not compromise their health or their lives because or for these drinks. Thank you. Mm, time? 604. 604. We're somewhere over here. Mm, yes, sir. I'm honest. Hi, Adonis. So I think you did your speech very well, and that you gave a lot of important information as well as, you know, they eliminated so Yeah, thank you, Adonis. Improvement. Um, I'm Tina. Hi, Tina. Um, I liked your speech. I could tell it's really personal. Um, the only thing is that um, you're kind of like shifting around sometimes, and also you're a little bit over time. But that's it. Yeah. Shifting a little bit back and forth, your hands were, you couldn't, um, you know, you were kind of time blind to play with them. And since your sweatshirt doesn't really fit, we couldn't really see your hands half the time. So when you have that issue, roll them up to your sleeve. Let me talk about the positive dimensions of your speech, Iris. I really liked Iris' speech, and let me show you and stress some of the things that were unique about Iris' speech. You notice that Iris didn't just cite journals, but peer-reviewed medical journals, and she gave the dates, and they were all recent. And she gave the statistics, and then she summed up the statistic. And she it could have been done just even a little more dramatically with your voice when you got to the end. So you could have said, so in other words, a third of adolescents are consuming energy drinks repeatedly during the week. Okay? That would have 
close the case for your introduction, but it really got everyone's attention. And you started with some very powerful evidence. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, your significant statement uh, was good. You um, related it to the audience, and I suspect, sadly, that more than a couple of people in here have consumed energy drinks at one time or another. Yeah. So that was okay. On your main body, your big indictment was for the caffeine. You cited Jackson and you gave us the standard. I would have liked you to have told us the year of Jackson again. You cited him previously. Uh, you gave us the standard, which was a wonderful thing to do, and then showed that all the drinks just exceed the standard, which was great. Um, I would also add, Iris, that not only do they exceed the standard, but they have all kinds of other crap in there that they add that are of questionable benefit and chromium and who day and all these other names you can't pronounce in large quantities that haven't been, you know, clinically tested. We go, put them in your body. Wow. You know. On your second uh, point on your main body, I like the way you personalized it. You didn't just give us mindless statistics, but you told us that you used to be an addict and you used to be drinking monster drinks and that was good. And then you told us that you began to feel nauseous one night and you began heaving chunks and throwing up. And it was gross. So that was a very vivid word picture that we saw you, we could just see you hanging over the toilet, puking. Not a pretty sight, right? And not a pretty picture. But you brought the argument home that these can make you physically ill. On your second reason, you brought the argument home that was even scarier, which is they can lead to death. Once again, Iris said, in a peer-reviewed medical journal called Military Medicine, and she knew the names fully of all three authors, which was impressive, she told how death has occurred and they drew the link to how it creates an irregular heartbeat which has resulted in death. Now my debaters would ask you in cross-examination, how often does this happen? Is, are these outliers? Is it one or two times? Can you quantify how often this happens? We don't know you don't tell us, but you did give us an indication. The evidence did say there have been reports of seizures and even deaths. So that's better than no evidence, right? Yeah. Okay, you said to p bring the emotional thing in. I feel strongly about that, and that was excellent. On your concrete actions, you gave people alternative protein shakes, chocolate tea, has a little caffeine in it, green smoothie, they're all a great source of energy, and an alternative to these horrible monster drinks. Go outside and get fresh air, 
take a power nap. These are great things, and you um, had footnotes for every one of those, even though you didn't cite them and say that these have been known to work. And there's evidence from peer-reviewed articles that these are alternatives. Okay? Yeah. You almost skipped the benefits, but you didn't, so that was good. And you said when you get off of this junk, you'll feel more productive and healthy. And you gave a personal testimony saying, when I got off of it, I, you know, I felt a heck of a lot better. Your summary, your conclusion, and tieback were fine. You know, the one thing I would say, Iris, about mm, the inadequacy of your persuasive speeches, why do you really think that all these adolescents drink these monster drinks? Is it a is it part of the drug culture of just a quick fix of I need energy, I've got to perform? What what really drives this? Is there more to it than just, you know, I gotta do a homework assignment? I don't know. You didn't say. But I suspect there's a little more to it than just, I got to do the homework assignment. It seems to be part of a larger pattern. Your canise, Iris. Less filler words. Three to five seconds of eye contact. And be confident how to go. Filler words. I don't think I used that one. Uh-huh. Good. The eye contact is still a little difficult. Why is that? I don't know, it's weird. I mean, <laughs> it's just, I don't know. I just feel awkward sometimes. Uh huh. Where? When you go for a job interview. Uh, I know. I mean, do you think you're going to get a job by uh, staring at the ceiling? I think when it's more like one on one, I'm more one on one's a easier. Lot of faces yeah. in front of me. It's just, okay. I just and what about confidence? Confidence. I think I think I got more comfortable in this class. Yeah. I got more confident. Yeah. Like in like the way beginning. Right. I used to be very, very nervous. Right. But I think I'm getting more comfortable. Yeah. Uh, significant improvement, and I think the, it's the old expression I've used. You fake it till you make it. You walk up there like you own the place. <laughs> And you say, I'm Iris, and I'm here to kick butt and take names, and here it goes, you know, and do it, you know? Okay. Good job, except for the overtime. Thank you, Iris. Okay. Okay. Give me a moment, please. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Laura. Okay. Okay, let me get you focused in. You're a little different than the last speaker. A half step forward would be helpful. Yeah. country. Okay, um, Laura stands before us. Yeah, nice contrast to the white. Your clothes fit, I'm pleased to say. <laughs> Good. 
No one's texting. All eyeballs should be on you. All computers shut. Find friendly eyes near the front and the center. Say your name. Feel the love. Start your speech. Hi, I'm Laura. Hi, Laura. When asked what the key to his success was, billionaire Warren Buffett pointed to a stack of books and said, Read. Every day. That's how knowledge accumulates, like interest. All of you can read, but not many of you will choose to do so. So, in this day and age, where can we, in our busy lives, where can we find the time to fit reading a book into our lives? Where can we get this wealth of knowledge that Warren Buffett thinks is so essential to his success? Today I'm going to, I would like to persuade you to listen to podcasts. I will give you two reasons why you should listen to podcasts, three concrete actions that you can take to start getting into the habit of listening to podcasts, and the benefits that you can get from listening to them. As college students, we of course don't have a lot of time on our hands to set aside to, to read books. But in addition to that, a lot of college students actually don't enjoy reading, believe it or not. Um, in a 2014 study by the Lincoln University, they explored the reading interest of over a thousand college students, and they found that less than 50% of these college students um, describe themselves as being enthusiastic readers, and only 6% 6 describe themselves as being engaged and avid readers, the kind that Warren Buffett would have been. So the first reason why I believe that you should listen to podcasts is that they're personal. Um, the way that podcasts work are that there are usually one to two people speaking into a microphone, and then that's recorded and presented later on an app or something, and the listener listens to them. And the listener, in my opinion, is kind of listening on this intimate conversation between these two people who also can bring guests in and different perspectives. And it kind of gives this feeling of connection to others because you're, you're listening to the thoughts and insights of other people. I found this to, to be so because a few weeks ago, my roommate's friend actually passed away from cancer. And I had to help her kind of cope with, with that death. But I didn't quite know how. And actually, the very next day when I was scrolling through my list of podcasts, um, I saw one that had just been released about how to cope with death, and I listened to it, and I found that it was very insightful, and it made me feel less alone because it made me feel, because it did also talk about like how to cope with death and how to help someone else cope with death. Mm -hmm. So it made me feel less alone, it made me feel more connected to everyone, and especially made me feel more connected to my friend, and that I could help her through what she was going through. Mm -hmm. The second reason why I believe that you should mm -hmm. listen to podcasts is that they're extremely convenient. Podcasts are usually only 30 to 60 minutes long, and because of the devices that we have today, we have the option of choosing which podcast to select from a variety of topics, when we want to listen to them, when we want to stop listening to them, when we want to resume, and also where we want to listen to them. In a 2015 uh, survey by the Pennsylvania State University, they surveyed over 13,000 college students listening to podcasts and looked into the motivations for listening to podcasts. And the statements, I listen to podcasts because they're free, and I listen to podcasts because they're because I can use them anywhere, were ranked the highest reasons for listening to podcasts. Mm -hmm. So the three actions that I believe you can take in order to get into the habit of listening to podcasts are one, that you can just think through your day and figure out a time in your schedule where you can devote to listening to podcasts. For some people, that could be in the morning when they're getting ready for bed, or for me during the day when I'm walking, sorry, in the morning when they're getting ready for school. <laughs> um, or for me during the day when I'm walking to different events and I'm not really doing anything besides walking. Or for some people, when they're later in the day or they're going to bed, they can just listen to it to calm them down before they go to sleep. The second thing that you can do is that you can download an app that provides podcasts such as Spotify, iTunes, or NPR, and you can subscribe to the channels that they have there and you can just get access to podcasts. And the third thing that you can do that I suggest is just to start listening to maybe one podcast a day until if you feel that it's something you want to continue doing, you can increase that. When you do these actions, I feel that you will feel more knowledgeable, will feel that you are more connected with other people, and that you have used your time more wisely. So in summary, I've given you two reasons why you should listen to the podcast, that they're personal and convenient, three actions that you can take to start getting into the habit of listening to podcasts, which is figuring out a time when you can listen to them, um, downloading an app that you can use, or and just starting to listen to podcasts by listening to one per day. In conclusion, there should be no doubt in anyone's mind that you should start listening to podcasts. 
And so while Warren Buffett has been a living example of the correlation between reading and success, in this day and age, I believe that it's much more personal and much more convenient to listen to podcasts, and I believe that that ultimately, ultimately provides the same benefits that reading can. Hmm. Thank you. Okay, thank you. What was the time? 4.54. 4.54. Thank you. We're somewhere over here still, I believe. Yes, sir. I mean, yes, ma'am. Uh, <laughs> hi, I'm Natalie. Hi, Natalie. Um, I would say I like the comparison that you made between podcasts and reading. You didn't just explain, that, like, oh, it's important that you listen to podcasts, but you actually explained, like, how the two correlate. And so I thought that was interesting. Improvement. Hi, I'm Nolan. Hi, Nolan. I really liked your speech. I just thought at some points your hand movements were a little distracting. But overall, I really liked your speech. Mm -hmm. No, I like your speech. Let's talk about Nolan's comment and watch yourself and your hands tonight on YouTube. What do you uh, think about? Uh, you um, had a canai that you wanted to use your hands more wisely and not be distracted with and by them. What's the dealio? Um, I'm not really sure. I think it's just something I do naturally when I speak. But when I'm when I'm presenting a speech, mm -hmm. I, it just kind of goes into like full full mode um, <laughs> because I'm so nervous about remembering the speech yeah. or talking that I don't yeah. really focus on my hand gestures. Okay, good. Well, um, you know, if you want to have a greater awareness of what your body is doing while you're speaking, maybe you could take a class in Tai Chi, the Chinese exercise, which you go very slow and slow movement. I don't know if you've ever seen people practice it, but I found it really develops a great mind-body connection so you can have a greater awareness of what your body is doing. Doing while you're speaking. So we, uh, <laughs> I've had some really crazy physical gestures that uh, men and women have done, and we're just shocked when they saw it on the video. And, uh, I do that. Ooh, wow. Okay. Mm, let me say one other overarching thing, mm -hmm. which is um, podcast versus books on tape, uh, and I was wondering, are they a bad alternative? It seemed that that would be a, mm, closer to what Warren Buffett would be advocating, and yet you didn't seem to think, or at least you, did, you didn't address it at all, but I would just be curious as to what you thought of books on tape. I think the problem, well, my point was that we have such busy lives that yeah, we don't have we, time. So we I have feel time like, to get through a whole book. Yeah, so just re re <coughs> reading books in segments isn't really a good thing. But So reading audio, listening to audiobooks in segments wouldn't really provide the same benefits, but okay. podcasts are much more concise and personal. Okay, good. Um, I want to say one other thing is uh, for people that may be interested in Warren Buffett and his suggestion to read books. Uh, there is a book by Charlie Munger, who is his best friend, who uh, details the key books that Warren Buffett advocates that people read. And in fact, when Charlie Munger is asked for an interview, very interesting, he demands that the reporter read certain books so they'll understand him and Warren and what they are doing through their books. So if any of you are interested, you can look up that book and find out what's in Warren Buffett's key library choices. 
Okay, let's go through your speech and see how it went. I want to say one other thing, since this will be the last time I'll get to talk to you. You uh, put a lot into this speech, and I would like you to edit it in the future down so you can say less and accomplish more. You try to get too much in, in my judgment, and you were a, I don't mean this really in a nasty way, but you were kind of a speed demon today. You were, blah, 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 blah. You were moving right along. Now, you're dealing with some people with 4.4 GPAs and some really bright people. So no one was unable to follow you. Everyone followed you, of course. But in the real world, people are going to go, slow down, girl. You know, come on. Right. Okay. Your thesis preview. Perfect. Your significant statement was interesting. Um, you gave a survey of the people uh, aren't happy readers. Uh, what I didn't get, and I docked you some points on it, was I didn't get a link to why that is significant to this audience. And that's what a significant statement is supposed to be significant to this one. And you needed to say, so are you one of those, you read only what you're required to do and scan only read, and you never read a novel or a book or anything else? Do you have a summer reading list or something? Yeah. So like that, on your main body, your first reason was personal. Mm -hmm. And you shared a personal story, which was excellent. You told of a death, and you found a podcast that helped you address this and deal with this. And I found similar uh, help for a variety of mm, issues I have been facing, both on podcasts and on uh, YouTube. So mm, it was a good testimonial, and I credit you for uh, your mm, personal story as evidence. Okay. Your second reason, you had a Pennsylvania State University study which said they use them because they're free and you can take them anywhere. And I think you were trying to tell the audience, hey, they're free and you can take them anywhere and they're quick and easy to use. So I thought I credited that being persuasive for you. And I thought that was good. On the concrete actions you can take, uh, you said think of a good time in your day when you can listen to podcasts. And then you said download them from Spotify, NPR, or iTunes, which I guess is concrete and specific enough. I think there's some other sources too, but those are the biggies. So that was good. And then you said listen to start with baby steps. Quote Bill Murray. Listen to one short podcast today. That was fun. Your benefits could have been more fleshed out. It was just one sentence. Your summary, fine. Your conclusion, fine. Your tie back to Warren Buffett was textbook. And it was fine. Your canise. Use your hands more wisely and try not to be distracted with them. Use speak more slowly and clearly. Use less filler words such as um. How did it go, Laura? Uh, we already addressed the first one. Um, uh -huh. The second one, I rushed it because I thought that there was so much information that I had to include. Yeah. Uh -huh. And the third one, I wasn't really aware of if I used filler words or not. Right. I'll just look back. It was better. Yeah, it was better. So overall, you did a good job. 
So, um, just work on the things that I've highlighted for you. But overall, excellent work. Thank you. Okay, are we done, or is there more? Does anybody want to do any? Uh, anybody else want to do their speech? A few bees want to go. A few bees want to go. Okay, I'm there. Sorry, guys. It's good. It's good, man. No one, Ryan. Okay, sir, uh, I'm going to have to move back or something. I'm going to have to figure out how to get you in the camera. You need me to take a step back? Half step back, yeah. Thank you, sir. Okay, I hear a lot of talking in the class. Okay, and no one, you're a B, is yes. that correct? Okay, good. Well, thank you for volunteering to no make our Friday, our Thursday, more uh, efficient because we will have to collect that was my plan. the uh, midterm, the final, and the hey. sticky speech, a lot of, a lot of uh, paperwork to deal with. Okay, Nolan stands before you managing attention. You texting over there? No. Cotter. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, close the computer, thank you. All the way. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Communicating, respect non-verbally, finding friendly eyes near the front and center. Say your name, feel the love. Start your speech. Hi, I'm Nolan. Hi, Nolan. Sports do not build character. They reveal it. This is a quote by Haywood Brown, a sports writer for the New York Times. Long time ago, I think he wrote in like the 1930s. This is important today because today I wanted to persuade you on the importance of playing sports. I think this is important because sports, they have many benefits in our lives. And I think that is important. So the first, uh, today I will be giving you two reasons and three concrete actions on why I think sports, why you should play sports. So the first reason I think you should play sports is not, is other than the physical benefits that you get with sports obviously, there are mental benefits. Uh, the Department of Sports and Recreation for the Government of Western Australia found that if you play sports one to three times a week, that will lower your mental distress by about 34%. And if you play uh, sports four more times a week, it'll uh, increase that by uh, to 47%. And I feel that this is important because as young adults, we live very stressful lives with school and relationships and just everything. It's good to play sports, you know, to just get that all out of your head. The second reason I think that you should play sports is because uh, Sports can just teach you so many important lessons. Like, for instance, in my own life, sports has taught me to maybe uh, work together with people you may not like and just get the job done. Uh, it teaches you to get up after you've been knocked down time and time again. And this uh, relates to my life because uh, recently I have told you guys multiple times how I have been... Uh, I can't play, all right, I'm not, I'm no longer on the UCLA football team. Well, to get back up from that situation, I've decided to put myself back out there, whether it be to the new coaching staff here at UCLA, or if I do have to transfer somewhere else, I just want to be able to play my sport that I love. And I feel that's important because these are invaluable life lessons that we can just learn from and grow from. Now, the three concrete actions 
that I would implore you guys to take is one, you know, just sign up for a rec team with your friends. It's always easier to go and do these things with your, with your friends. They just make everything easier. The second one would probably be to, you know, just go to a sporting event that you may be interested in. You know, you can learn a little bit about the game, you can be there with your friends, and just have a good time. And I think the final action would be to uh, just look up videos on YouTube on a certain sport. For instance, my roommate, he's on the football team right now, but he looks up the weirdest stuff and he's good at the most random stuff. For instance, during winter quarter, we just go to the Wooden Center and play racquetball like at least twice a week. So if you're at the Wooden Center and you see two big guys playing racquetball, that's us. <laughs> so and now, uh, the way these actions will, should make you feel is not only physically better, you won't, your body just won't start to feel better, and thank you, but your mind. It takes your, sports will take your mind off of like the stressful things in life. Mm -hmm. Say you have a midterm that you're stressing about. Mm -hmm. Just go out, you know, play the sport, you just have a good time. So, in summary, I have told you two reasons why I think you should play sports and three concrete actions. <clears throat> there should be no doubt in this room um, that I should have persuaded you to play sports. And in conclusion, uh, sports do not uh, build character, they reveal it. Sports can be a major building block in your life if you allow them to. So just go out there, have a good time with some buddies, and just go play sports. Thank you. Thank you. Time. 422. 442. 442. 442. Okay, yeah, we're getting up there. Can't take off 20 seconds. Yeah, okay. Don't call me 422. That is 42. I'm Sydney. Hi, Sydney. Uh, I liked your speech. I thought it was about relatable. Like play sports, but um, I really liked it. And you command the room. This is really nice. I'm Tim. Hi, Tim. I thought it was a really good speech. You fumbled a couple words when you said that. There you go. Okay, well, um, uh, there's a, uh, a tourism, you know, that when you're writing um, writer's advice and people that are doing speeches, you know, they should stick to what they know. I'm not sure I really agree with that. Um, what did... Dickens didn't know about the French Revolution, which I could go on and on. But you did, you chose to do a speech on something you knew, right? Yes. It was heavy on evidence of your personal experience and very light on studies and research, and I didn't get the dates of your research. When I looked it up, it was mainly what they did. They compiled a lot of evidence from other studies uh -huh. and had it there, so it didn't have like a direct date. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you should say I accessed it in 2017 or right. explained that, okay? So it had credibility. You said sports do not build character, they reveal it, and uh, I guess you tied back to that in the end, so that was successful. You encourage people to play sports, and I guess, I, I'm struggling with this, I guess you mean organize sports, I, don't know, I guess maybe you did I mean, or you didn't. They did don't really have to be organized. Yeah, I, 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 I wasn't clear, but right. I guess it was, it wasn't, I don't know. In any case, um, you uh, cited for your first reason that, uh, you know, you 
reduce your stress and you know, the more you play the more less stressed and depressed you are that seems reasonable and uh, thank you Iris that seems like a reasonable study and conclusion <coughs> Your second reason is you talk about valuable skills you learned to, to do the rest of your life, and you talked about two things. You work with people you don't like and how to get back up when you're knocked down. And I didn't really get the backstory of why you no longer play. I don't know if you were injured or kicked off the team or had it trouble with the coach or I just don't know but you are determined to still play football and that came through as your um, you know your plan of action on your concrete action that you advocated the students in this classroom to do you said play with friends, watch sporting events, and watch YouTube. Yeah. Uh, your benefits were actually good. Um, your summary was okay. Your conclusion and tieback were fine. Uh, the one thought I had, you know, and uh, I don't mean to be a downer here, but, you know, I'm nervous, and I've said this to the administration, because mm, seven years ago, the debate team researched these head injuries that were occurring in football, and we concluded that they were very bad. Yes, concussions are bad. And <laughs> they would shorten the lives and create bad future lives for the students. And um, I know you weren't advocating Irish play professional football, but you didn't you didn't talk about that and but for yourself, but I guess it's just a chance you're willing to take, right? Well, from what I know is most concussions are they're not from actual like head on head contact. Mm -hmm. Most of them are from when your head hits the ground. Yeah. So Okay. Well, I don't. I don't want to go go bummer and get into this heavily. I just want to mention that I thought of it. Yeah. Thought maybe that it was an issue that you were going to think about or mention. Let's talk about your canines and close this down for the day. Yeah. Um, your canines. Remember every part of the speech. Yes. Make good eye contact. You have a commanding voice. How'd it go? Well, I didn't. I don't think I forgot any parts of my speech this time. No, you didn't. I thought my eye contact was better. Uh huh. And I thought I used my commanding voice. Yes, you did. Um, yeah. So um, I've given you my feedback on you know the. Uh, pros and cons of your speech. So, thank you for getting that done. Uh, we'll do one more. And that will be Sydney Green Street. Okay. I don't understand. I said I don't understand the best. Sydney Wade. She was the uh, girlfriend of the president in. Uh, the American yeah. president. That's why I was awesome. Sydney <laughs> Allen Way. <laughs> that's a good movie. It has a, uh, what's her name that's married to Warren Beatty. Give me a moment, please. I know, I know. I should listen to Isis. She needs.
Meanie. The Green Meanie. Okay, let's... Ooh, let's see. I hope we don't have to change the battery. Yeah. I'll look out for it. We watch for the red light that comes on. I don't want to lose this whole day's work. Go. Shh. Quiet, please. Have the computer open. Okay. Begin. Hi, I'm Sydney. Hi, Sydney. When you see wrong or inequality or injustice, speak out. This is your country. This is your democracy. Make it, protect it, and pass it on. This is a quote by Thur um, Thurgood Marshall. He is one of the first African American justices, and he is also one of the leaders in the civil rights movement in America. So today I'm going to convince you to become politically involved, and I will give you three, uh, two reasons why you should become politically involved, three concrete actions you can take to become politically involved, and a few benefits that will follow if you accept my proposal. So this is our country, and I don't know about you, but I kind of want to say what goes on around me. I look at the news nowadays, and I ask myself, how did this happen? And I realize it's because we all voted for it, not just me, but everyone in this country. So that's why I think it's important for everybody to have their say in politics and what goes on around us. Mm -hmm. So the first reason you should become politically involved is because... Uh-oh, we have to stop. <laughs>